All right, guys, today we're going to look at trig functions of any angle, any angle you want, trig functions. All right, what they're going to do today is they're going to give you an ordered pair somewhere on a coordinate plane and ask you to find all six trig functions of that point. Now, if they give you an ordered pair, like this one right here, there's obviously an X and Y coordinate, which means, you know, the X on the X coordinate, you go this far on the X axis. The Y coordinate, you're going this far on the Y axis. And so what happens is, um, you know, basically, if you connect it from the origin, it gives you a right triangle, which is what we were working on yesterday. And the right triangle, you know, we have sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Well, um, because that point's there, the opposite side from theta, and we're always going to measure theta from the origin, that angle, I'm going to get another color, that angle right there is always going to be our theta. The opposite side is always the y-coordinate. That's how far up we went. The uh, adjacent side is always going to be the x-coordinate because it's how far right we went. And the tangent is always going to be opposite over adjacent, which in this case on the coordinate plane is going to be y over x. And that's going to be true all the time. So what you really got to jot down there is I want you to start thinking about sine being the y-coordinate, the cosine being the x-coordinate, and tangent being y over x or sine over cosine. Um, the R is included too, and R is a big deal. R is basically the radius of that circle that you draw from the, in fact, if you start this point, distance away from the origin, and draw a circle like we did here, then that's, that R is actually the radius of the circle. And R squared, it's a Pythagorean theorem. You know, we have a right triangle. So X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. That's exactly where it comes from. So anytime you need R, this is what we're going to do. We're going to or take the square root of the other side, and we're going to write it like this, the square root of x squared plus y squared. All right. Um, it doesn't matter which quadrant it's in. That's all this, this slide is about. If it's in quadrant two, you still have a right triangle. You still have uh, x being the adjacent side, y being the uh, opposite side, theta is this, but we're also going to measure, we're going to end up measuring theta from right here, even though the graph says it's there, which is okay. It's called the reference language, which we'll get to just a little bit. Uh, if it's in quadrant three, same deal. X is still the adjacent side. Y is still the opposite side. R is still the radius, which is, you know, the hypotenuse. R squared equals X squared plus Y squared. If it's in quadrant four, it's the same deal. Still the point. X is still the adjacent side. Y is still the opposite side. So this is true all the time. I just want you to, if I can just drill this in your head, sign Think about sine being the y over r, cosine being the x over r, and tangent always just being y over x. That is going to be true forever. And don't forget what r is. r is the hypotenuse, which means it is always x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So as long as you have that info, you can do this whole lesson piece of cake, but you got to hopefully get some of that. All right, just a quick reminder here of what's happening. Remember, cosine is x and sine is y in quadrant one. Everything is positive. Cos the x is positive, so cosine is positive. The y is positive, so sine is positive. In quadrant two, the points are negative positive, which means cosine is negative, sine is positive. I'm going to talk about tangent. Tangent is always y over x, so if the signs are different, tangent is negative. Signs are the same, uh, tangent is positive. Quadrant three, they're both negative, which means cosine is negative and sine is negative because x, x and y. Tangent is positive because the signs are the same. Negative divided by negative is a positive. Remember, tangent is y over x. So if the signs are the same, it's going to be positive. Quadrant four, cosine is positive. It's the x. Sine is negative. It's the y. Tangent is going to be negative because the signs are different. Y over x, different signs. All right, let's try one here. It says find the six trig function values for each angle shown. And it gives you your point. That's all you need right there is really the point. Um, you need your r. Remember, r squared is x squared plus y squared. So it'd be negative 4 squared plus negative 3 squared. It's supposed to be a 3. There we go. So r squared is really, if I punch all that in, I get 25. So r is either going to be plus or minus 5. r is always going to be positive because it's, it's square. It's a square root. So r is 5. So watch how quick this is. Sine is opposite, or the y over r. So sine is negative 3 fifths. Cosine is x over r, negative 4 fifths. 
tangent is just y over x. I don't even need r for tangent, but y over x would be positive 3 fourths because the sines are the same. That makes it positive. Cosecant's reciprocal of sine, negative 5 thirds. Secant's reciprocal of cosine, negative 5 fourths. Cotangent's reciprocal of tangent, 4 thirds. All you have to do, so if they give you a point, find your r, you have to know sine is the y over r, cosine is x over r, tangent is y over r, and you got it. Okay, let's try another one. This, now the point's in quadrant 4, and it is, neg is 1, negative 1. Okay, I'm not going to dwell so much on the picture, because I think you can do these you know, pretty well without it even. So I'm going to find the r. r squared is x squared plus y squared. If I work that out, I get 2 over here, which means r, that's a 2. r is the square root of 2. So, sine. Sine is the y over r, negative 1 over the square root of 2. Now, you can't leave that square root of 2 on the bottom. If you rationalize it, you'll get this right here. And I'll show you a shortcut for that if I haven't already. Cosine, x over r. The x is positive 1 over square root of 2. So, it's going to be positive square root of 2 over 2. The tangent is the y over the x, which is negative 1 over 1, which is just negative 1. Now, once I get here to cosecant, I'm just going to start doing reciprocals. And I'm looking at these values. It's easier to do reciprocals of your first value than what you rationalize. So the first reciprocal is just going to be negative square root of 2. The secant reciprocal of cosine is just positive square root of 2. And cotangent reciprocal of tangent, which is still negative 1. They're the same value. Actually, hopefully you recognize if, sine, if x and y are the same, if sine and cosine are the same, that's a 45-45-90 train. All right. Um, now they're going to tell you this. Let's say tangent's negative two-thirds and is in the second quadrant. Find the other ones. Okay, your best bet here may be to draw it, which I did here. If tangent's negative two-thirds, don't forget tangent is really y over x, which means my y coordinate's two, my x coordinate is negative three. And the reason it's not negative two and positive three is because of the second quadrant. Second quadrant means your x is negative and your y is positive. That's why I did the negative three and the two. Um, I went ahead quickly and found that the r is squared at 13, and you just got to find the other values. So drawing that little picture right there probably will help you when they give you that information right there. Just remember tangents y over x. The other thing you could have done if you don't want to draw the picture is you could always say, don't sorry about that. You could do r squared equals um, the x squared, which is 3 squared, plus y squared, negative 2 squared, and you would get this. You get r squared is 13, like we got in the picture, r is squared at 13. So... Either way you want to go. Cotangents, reciprocal of tangent. That's the first one. No work there. Second one says sine. Remember, sine is y over r. Sine here is 2. r is squared of 13. If you rationalize that, you will get this right here. Just trust me there. Cosine is x over r. So it's negative 3 over 13, which ends up when you rationalize being negative 3 on 13 over 13. Cosecant is reciprocal of sine. Sine was 2 on 13, which, uh, 2 over squared 13, so I put squared 13 over 2. And secant's reciprocal of cosine, so you just flip that one, squared 13, negative squared 13 over 3. And there are your answers for that one. And again, doing the same thing over and over again. You have to know, again, sine is y over r, cosine is x over r, tangent's y over x, and then the rest are just reciprocals. One more slide here. Um, Okay, these are called quadrantal angles. If they give you angles that are actually on the y-axis or x-axis or y-axis or x-axis, I'm going the same way. All right, now here's the deal with these, though. One thing you got to know, if this is the point, 0, 1, that means your x is 0, your y is 1, you still need your r. That's r. What r stands for is how far it is from the, vertex, from the origin to that point. And if you go up 1, you went 1. R is 1. You could also do your x squared plus y squared there. You get the same answer. Okay, now let's go through. Sine is y over r, which in this case is 1 over 1, which is 1. Cosine is x over r, which is 0 over 1, which is 0. Tangent of 90. Tangent's y over x. Now, in this case, I'd put 1 over 0, which you can't do. So in this case, tangent's undefined. I'm just going to put this, but it's undefined. You cannot have 0 in your denominator. Okay, let's see what happens at 180. At 180, again, r is 1 again because that's how far it is from the vertex. Sorry, I keep saying vertex. From the origin to the point, it's 1. That's what r is. So sine is y over um, 
r, so 0 over 1 is 0. Cosine is x over r, negative 1 over 1, negative 1. Tangent is y over x, which is 0 over negative 1. That's okay to have 0 on the top, but it equals 0. Um, 270, which is down here, 270, well, you know, that far around. Um, r is 1 again, because that's how far it is from the origin to the point. Um, sine is um, y over r, negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. Cosine is x over r, 0 over 1, which is 0. Tangent is y over x, negative 1 over 0, which again is undefined. One more to go. Um, 360 over 0, either one. So how far is it from the origin to the point? R is 1 again. Um, r is always 1 on these, on these quadrantal angles. Sine of 360 is um, y over r, which is 0. Cosine 360 is x over r, which is 1 over 1, which is 1. And tangent is y over x, which is 0 over 1, which is 0. I think if you just stop and just look at those numbers real quick, there's a definite pattern. You know, it goes 1. If you look at the 90s, it goes 1, 0, undefined. Then 0, 1, negative 1, undefined. Or 0, then negative 1, 0, undefined. Then 0, 1, 0. Definite pattern, depending on where the angle is. Um, hope this video makes some sense to you. We were definitely going to work pretty hard on this tomorrow, and I'll help you with it, as I always do, and hopefully we get it just fine. So I'll see you then. Look forward to it. See you. Bye.